a very good subcar from Goregaon MPS Municipal Secondary School East BMC Education Department. So today we are going to study the lens part, and this is the third session. So let's start with our topic. Okay, so today let's start with the sign conventions. So yesterday we have seen that the, how to draw the ray diagrams for the concave and the convex lenses. So today, uh, today we are going to study about the sign conventions and different types of formulas. So first of all, U. U is the distance of the object. Then here in the diagram, you can also see here the pictures, whatever given to you in front. So here the u is the distance of the object v is the distance of the image then comes the f f is the focal length h1 is the height of the object and h2 is the height of the image then here focal length of a convex lens it will be always positive and the focal length of the concave lens will be negative now here in this case u is the distance of the object that is it is the distance between the lens and the object where it is placed. Okay. Then comes B. Now B is the distance of the image. It is the distance between the lens and the image. Then comes the focal length. Now focal length as we know that focal length is the distance between the optical center and the principal focus. Then comes the height of the object that is H1. Now here H1 is the height. You can see here H1 is the height of the object that means in the, in the picture here, in the left hand side, object is given and its height is measured from the principal axis. Then comes H2, it is the height of the image. Then focal length of a convex lens, it is positive and that of a concave lens will be negative. Then comes the spherical mirror. Now, what do you mean by the spherical mirrors? Now, to go further, we should know that uh, what are spherical mirrors and different parameters. Then Spherical mirror is a curved mirror which is a part of a hollow sphere and spherical mirrors are of two types. First one is the concave mirrors and next one is the convex mirrors. Now concave mirror that means a spherical mirror whose reflecting surface is curved inwards towards the sources of light that is known as the concave mirror. Now why we are studying this because this is the basic part if you know these things then it will be easier for you to draw a ray diagram also and to solve the problems also. Then here in this case xy is the principal axis then principal axis has center of curvature focus and pole. Now pole is the point where the principal axis get uh, it meets or it intersects with the mirror. Then comes the convex mirror where a spherical mirror whose reflecting surface is curved outwards and here in this case also xy is the principal axis, p is the pole, f is the focus and c is the center of curvature. Now here in this case the side of the incident or uh, the side of the incident ray okay that means in a concave in a concave mirror uh, the source of light where it is present it is spherical come inwards and from there we measure all the center of curvature focus and pole and in convex mirror the so where the uh, where the source of light is present in that uh, in that side it is puffed outwards but whatever the measures are there that is the focus center of curvature it is on the opposite side Okay, then comes the lens formula. Now, lens formula is what? It is the formula which is showing the relationship between the distance of the object and the distance of the image. Now, as we have seen that U is the distance of the object from the lens. Okay, now here in the picture, you can see that AB is the object. Okay, on the left hand side. And in the mid, the convex lens is placed. And from convex lens, that is from now from optical center, uh, one straight line has been drawn. And from there only till that point, uh, the distance of the object is given. Okay. Now here in this case, distance of the object and the distance of the image, that is B. Now B, you can see that in picture in the uh, next side, uh, in the 
uh, other side of the lens, you can see A dash B dash is the image, and this distance of image is measured from the lens towards the image. And then comes the focal length. So F is the focal length. So here these three parameters are taken to find the uh, focal length or it is a lens formula you can see. So here the formula which is showing the relationship between the distance of the object and the distance of the image and the focal length f is called the lens formula. And this formula is given by 1 upon v minus 1 upon u equals to 1 upon f. So this is your lens formula. So the lens formula is same for any spherical lenses. Okay, it will be same for all the spherical lenses and any distance of the object from the lens whatever the distance may be okay of the object okay whatever the distance may be of the object it will be same then it is however necessary to use the sign convention pro properly because what happens in some cases v is negative in some cases v is positive Okay, if V is negative, that means it is on the same side of the object. If V is positive, that means it is on the other side of the object. Then U may also be positive, U may also be the negative. So here sign conventions should be used properly by using these lens formula. Now this lens formula is useful to, um, to solve the problems from this lesson. So... Yeah, you can jot it down in one notebook so that that will be easier for you to write the, uh, to first of all, to you just jot it down the formulas in your notebook and it will be easier for you to understand. Then comes the magnification. Now magnification means what? The magnification due to a lens is the ratio of the height of the image H2 to the height of the object that is H1. Now, magnification means how it is magnified, how much it is larger. Okay, so to know that formula, we should know what is the height of the image, what is the height of the object because we are comparing. Okay, so here in this picture, AB is the object and A dash B dash is the image. Now, in this case, we will compare the image with respect to the object. If ob whatever the size of the object, whatever the height, whatever will be the distance of the object according to that we will measure that whether the image is smaller or it is larger or it is magnified we can say so to um, to draw the conclusion how much it is magnified the formula is the magnification due to a lens is the ratio of the height of the image to the height of the object Okay, so as we are comparing the height of the image to the height of the object, that's why height of the image is written upwards and that height of the object is written downwards. Now here, one of the formula for the magnification will be height of the image upon height of the object. Now height of the image is represented as H2 and height of the object is represented as H1. Okay, now here in the picture you can see that on the left hand side AB is the object and H1 is the height and on the right hand side A dash B dash is the image and H2 is the height of the image. Okay, so now we will consider this as equation 1 where we are considering the height of the image and the object for the magnification formula. Then the next one we can also uh, find magnification with the help of the distance of the object and the distance of the image. Now here in this case, the magnification due to a lens is also related to the distance of the object and that of the image from the lenses. Now again, we are comparing the distance of the image and the object. Now yesterday while showing the ray diagrams, I already told you that if the object is far away at a far away distance at an infinite distance then we get a point image but as it comes closer and closer to the lenses then we get a magnified image okay so here in this case magnification equals to distance of the image upon the distance of the object that means m equals to v upon u now v is the distance of the image and u is the distance of the object. Now here in the picture already shown what is the distance that is u is considered as the distance between the object and the lens and v is considered as a distance between the image and the lens. So here magnification can also 
we find out with the help of this formula that is distance of the image upon distance of the object. Now suppose in a problem it is given only the distance uh, of the image and the object is given then in, uh, and you have to find out the magnification. Then also you can find the magnification because magnification has the formula for the distance of the image upon distance of the object. Or in the problem, if it is asked to find the magnification and height of the image and height of the object is given, then that is also possible because the formula for magnification, that is equation 1, is m equals to h2 upon h1, that is the height of the image upon height of the object. Okay, so here magnification, this height of the image and height of the object is equation 1 and the second formula that is magnification equal to distance of the image upon distance of the object if we consider it as equation 2 and when we compare these two equations then what we can get that here magnification and magnification both the cases they are equal okay here also we are finding out the magnification and here also we are finding out the magnification so in this case we can say that h2 upon h1 will be equal to v upon u now with this we can draw one formula that h2 upon h1 equal to v upon u now this formula can also be used to uh, to find out whether suppose um, distance of image and object is given to you and only this and only height of the object is given and you have to find the height of the image that means h2 now if you don't know h2 but if you know all the three parameters that is h1 v and u then you can definitely find it out with the help of this formula so here in this case here we got uh, again three formulas one magnification magnification equal to h2 upon h1 second one magnification equal to v upon u and the third one h2 upon h1 equal to v upon u okay then comes the power of lens and the combination of lenses now power of lens means what now yesterday we studied what do you mean by the converging lenses and what do you mean by the diverging lenses okay now first of all whenever incident ray it falls on the uh, lens okay now either it will coagulate the uh, refracted rays at one point or it will diverge the diverge it now here in this case what will happen now if the lens converges the incident rays or it coagulates the incident ray then it is known as the converging lens which is our convex lens okay yesterday we have seen this and if and lens it is diverging the incident rays and and um, it is diverging the incident rays and in that case it is a diverging lens and which and which one is the diverging lens it is the concave lens now the capacity of the lens okay the capacity of the lens to converge or diverge the incident ray it is known as the power Okay, now it's power or you can say capacity means what? We say now what is the capacity? It is the power. So the capacity of a lens to converge or diverge the incident rays is called as its power, that is P. And the power of a lens, it depends upon what? It depends upon the focal length. How much is the distance between the optical center and the principal focus? Now here in this case, power is the inverse of its focal length. Now, if power is um, more than the focal length is less. Now here power is always, it is inversely proportional to the focal length. That means if power will be increased, focal length will be decreased. And if focal length will be increased, then power will be decreased. So likewise, it is inversely proportional. It is not directly proportional. If power will increase, focal length will decrease and vice versa. Okay. And this power is made uh, this power is measured as P and P is known now the unit for the power of lens is diopter we called it as D now in this case the formula for the power is P equals to 1 upon F and F will be in meters okay now here in this case the unit for the power is 1 diopter and 1 upon and focal length we measure in meter so 1 meter so here you can write it as p equals to 1 upon f uh, in meters now here power is inverse of its focal length f and its f is expressed in meters so 
P represents the power and F represents the focal length. So this formula is also important to solve the problems. Then comes the combination of lenses. Now combination means what? We are combining. Okay. Two, two lenses if we combine. Then if two lenses are there, so naturally there will be two focal lengths. Okay. Now to uh, know the effective focal length of it, how we represent the formula. Now if two lenses with focal length f1 and f2 are kept in contact with each other, then the combination has an effective focal length. Okay, then that effective focal length is given by 1 upon f equal to 1 upon f1 plus 1 upon f2. Now here, this is the formula for the effective focal length if two lenses are used. Where there is a combination of lenses. Now if two lenses are used, that means there are two focal lengths. If two focal lengths, that means there will be two powers. As we know that P equals to 1 upon f. So if we, find, if we want to find out the power of two lenses, then... P1 and P2, we will consider the power of two lenses. Then the effective power of their combination will be P equals to P1 plus P2. So thus, when two lenses are kept touching each other, the power of the combined, combined lens is equal to the sum of their individual powers. Okay. When two lenses are combined, then individual focal length we have to take and individual powers we have to take. And then we have to combine them we have to add them okay and after that we get an effective power of their combination or effective focal length okay so here once again effective focal length means what if the two lenses with focal lengths f1 and f2 are kept in contact with each other the combination has an effective focal length so 1 upon f equal to 1 upon f1 plus 1 upon f2 then if the power of two lenses are P1 and P2, then the effective power of their combination is P equals to P1 plus P2. So thus, when two lenses are kept touching with each other, the power of the combined lens is equal to the sum of their individual powers. Now here, likewise, two lenses can be used or they can be kept a little bit far away distance from each other. Okay. So this is the example from your book. Now here, it is given that an object is placed vertically at a distance of 20 centimeters. Okay. Now the distance is given. Object distance is given. If object distance is given, that means, as we have seen here, what you will represent the object distance? You will represent the object distance as u. So here we can write that the distance of the object u will be minus 20 centimeters, okay, from a convex lens. Then if the height of the object is 5 centimeter and the focal length of the lens is 10 centimeter, height of the object. Now here, height of the object, what we will represent? We will represent the height of an object as h1 and h1 is given 5 centimeters and the focal length of the lens is 10 centimeters. Okay, so here small f, that is the focal length is given as 10 centimeters. So what will be the position, the size and the nature of the image? Okay, so how much bigger will be the image and the image be as compared to the object? If bigger it is asked, that means we have to find out the magnification. Then the first one that is what will be the position, size and nature of the image? Okay. Now, to know that, first of all, we will write what is given. Now, here, height of the object H1 is given, which is 5 cm. Focal length is given, which is 10 cm. Then, as it is written upwards, it is convex lens. That's why, for convex lens, F will be positive. So, that's why, uh, in the problem, it is specified that it is a convex lens. So, that's why, focal length will be positive. If it is a concave lens, then focal length will be negative. So here as it is a convex lens, so it is positive. Then comes the distance of the object that is u. Okay, it is uh, written as minus 20 centimeters. So the image distance that is v. Okay, then height of the image that is h2 and magnification. These are all not given to us. So we have to find it out. So here in this case, what will be the position? Okay, position, size and nature of the image. To know all these things, we should know the image distance, the image height 
and then with the help of that we can find the magnification so first what we will do we will find the image distance that is v so to find it out we will go through the lens formula that is 1 upon v minus 1 upon u equal to 1 upon f now here uh, the distance of the object is given to us and the focal length is also given to us. So what we will do that minus 1 upon u, we will shift to the right hand side. Okay, then uh, it will become plus. So if minus 1 by u is shifted to the right hand side from left hand side. So here in this case, it will become plus 1 upon u. So here, why we shifted this 1 upon u? Because we have to find the image distance that is p okay and we know the parameters of u and f so we will um, we can easily find out v with the help of these um, parameters then so 1 upon v equals to 1 upon 20 1 upon minus 20 now here distance of the object is given minus 20 centimeter so that's why we have written 1 upon minus 20 plus 1 upon 10 here then comes now with the help of lcm 20 and 10 we can find that uh, 20 will be the answer for that and then after that uh, 20 divided by 20 1 will come and 1 multiplied by 1 it is also 1 so here as minus 20 is given that's why we have written minus 1 in the numerator plus now 10 when uh, 20 is divided by 10 we will get the answer 2 and 2 multiplied by 1 will become 2 so plus sign as it is then plus minus will be minus and the sign of the greater number will be given that is positive sign so here you can see that 1 upon 20 will be the answer and if we cut both the one uh, both the numerator one from left hand side and right hand side then what we will get we will get b equals to 20 centimeters now this shows the positive signs of sign of the image distance okay shows that the image is formed at 20 centimeters on the other side of the lens okay when v is positive it shows that the image is uh, formed on the other side of the lens if v is negative then it shows that the image is formed on the same side of the lens now this thing is important and huh? just underline that whenever the value of v is positive that means it is present on the other side of the lens and whenever the, the sign of v is negative then that means the image is formed on the same side of the lens okay now we know the distance of the image that is v which is 20 centimeters so then now we know the position that which it is on which side it is on the same side of the object or it is on the uh, other side of the lens so the position will be it is on the other side of the lens then comes the size now size uh, now what will be the position size now position we understood that it is on the other side of the lens now size we have to find size means what for size we should know the height okay so here height of the image we have to find it out now to find the height of the image now what parameters we have if we go through the uh, formula for the m equals to h2 upon h1 then we will be not be able to find out because m we don't know and uh, h2 also we don't know at least two parameters we should know for this formula so what we will do we will with the help of the formula that is uh, we will combine two formulas of ma uh, magnification that is h2 upon h1 equals to v upon u now here in this case we will take this formula because we know three parameters from it that is h1 we know b we know and u we know and with the help of that we can find it out h2 h2 is the height of the image now h2 equals to b upon u into h1 now we shifted h1 on the present on the left hand side in the denominator towards the numerator and we it will be get uh, and uh, the sign we will get multiplication sign there so b upon u multiplied by h1 now v we know it is 20 centimeters then uh, u that is the distance of the object it is minus 20 then multiplied by h1 now h1 is given as 5 centimeters so we will multiply it with 5 then h2 equals to what we will get now 20 20 will get cancelled and minus 1 will be the answer uh, for that and minus 1 if we multiply it by 5 then we will get minus 5 centimeters now we get the height of the image 
okay which is minus 5 cm then with the help of h2 and v sorry with the help of uh, as we have find it out b and h2 now it is time to find the magnification that is how much bigger it is okay then we will go through the formula m equals to b upon u or you can use the formula h2 upon h1 so here we will go with b upon u so in that case 20 minus 20 20 upon minus 20 we will get minus 1 now whenever the sign negative comes okay now first of all a negative sign of the height of the image and the magnification now here as we know that h2 is the height of the image and it is of negative sign then magnification also the in answer magnification is also having the negative sign these two things it shows that the image is inverted and it is real okay whenever the height is negative and magnification is also negative that means the image is inverted okay and it is real image and it is uh, below the principal axis and is of same size as that of the object okay so here the size is same both of them are having the same sizes uh, size of the uh, size of the image is same now here in this case as we know that h1 was 5 cm and h2 is also minus 5 cm why minus 5 because it is present below the principal axis and it is inverted that's why we have given the sign as minus sign there okay and height of the image it was erect and it is above the principal axis so it was plus 5 cm so 5 cm and uh, h1 is 5 cm and h2 is minus 5 cm that is 5 5 they both are same only the thing is minus sign is because it is inverted then comes so here with this uh, finding we we find out the position where it is placed okay uh then after that size that is the height we have find we, uh, we found and how much uh, and the nature of the image and how much bigger it is it is also find out with the help of these formulas okay the next problem is the focal length of a convex lens is 20 cm okay focal length is given to you and what will be the power now here the given is focal length that is f is given to you which is 20 cm of a convex lens now if it is a convex lens then as i already told you focal length of a convex lens will be always positive so here that's why it is not negative sign is not given positive is there so here f is 20 cm and what we will do we will convert these centimeters into the meter okay as for finding out the power as we have already studied here now p equals to 1 upon f and 1 upon f and f is expressed in meters and here in this case f is given in centimeters so what we will do we will convert the centimeters into the meters now in this case now as we know that 1 meter equals to 100 centimeters isn't it now while converting from centimeters to meters what we will do we will divide the given centimeter okay by 100 so that we will get the uh, product we will get whatever the answer in meters so here in this case 20 is divided by 100 and after the division we will get 0.2 meters so it, likewise it is converted into the meters then power of the lenses is p okay now p p is the power of the lenses so we have to find out the power so p equals to 1 upon f and f will be expressed in meters so meters we have already converted and if the focal length is already given you in meter then you don't need to convert it because we have mentioned that for finding the power f will be f should be in meters if it's already in meters then no need to convert but if it is in centimeters then you have to convert So here p equals to one upon f that is in meters so equal to one upon zero point two. Now one upon zero point two that means what what we will do we will cut that point uh, which is present between zero and two and we will place one zero in the numerator. Okay, we will cut the point from the denominator and we will in and we will place one zero 
after one in a numerator and after that what we will do we will two fives are ten so likewise five diopter is the answer so the power of the lens is five d d is the unit of the power d means diopter so likewise we can find out um, the power of the lenses so these are the uh, whatever formulas we study here so these formulas are only used to solve the problems okay then one of the problem is suppose the object distance is 3 cm in front of the mirror okay now object distance means what u it is present in front of the mirror and image distance is 12 cm in front of the mirror so find the magnification now both the object and the image they both are in front of the mirror whenever they both are in front of the mirror that means we will be negative okay and here in this case so the magnification m is given by so here you can see we uh, we know the formula that is m equals to minus v upon u why minus v because v is present in front of the mirror okay if it is present on the other side of the mirror then it would not have been negative it will be positive but as it is present in front of the mirror that's why it is negative now u and v these are negative why because they are present in front of the mirror so here m equals to minus again in bracket minus 12 upon minus 3 now here in this case m equals to minus 12 upon 3 that is if uh, 12 is divided by 3 then we get the 4 as answer so our answer will be 4 that is negative now if the magnification is negative then we can say that the image is inverted and u okay in short we will uh, we will revise the different formulas then we will go to the other part so first of all sign conventions u is the distance of the object from the lens v is the distance of the image from the lens okay then focal length now focal length is what focal length is the uh, distance between the focus and the optic and the optical center then h1 is the height of the object and h2 is the height of the image then as i have already told you if it is present above the principal axis then it will be positive h1 and mostly object is, object height is positive and if it is present below the principal axis then it will be negative okay so then focal length of a convex lens is always positive and that of a concave lens will be always negative then comes the lens formula it is the relationship between the distance of the object and the distance of the image and the focal length that is f and it is called as the lens formula now here in this case you can say that here uh, u is the distance between the lens and the object okay and b is the distance between the image and the lens so here 1 upon b minus 1 upon u equals to 1 upon f so the lens formula is same for any spherical lens and any distance of the object from the lens so it is however necessary to use the sign convention properly okay then comes the magnification that is magnification can be uh, we can use the formula height of the image upon height of the object okay that is m equals to h2 upon h1 okay and then also magnification can also be uh, defined with the formula distance of the image upon distance of the object okay now here in this case m equals to v upon u this is the formula now u may be positive or negative if u uh, sorry v may be positive or negative if v is negative then it shows that the image is on the same side of the mirror or same side of the lens if v is positive then it shows it is on the other side of the lens then magnification also if it is magnification is positive then the image is erect and it is a virtual image whereas if magnification is negative then the image is inverted and real image okay then with the help of these two equations we can find one another equation that is h2 upon h1 equals to v upon u then comes the power of lenses which is 
the power of lenses is the capacity of the lens to converge or diverge the incident ray and it is known as its power so here the unit of the power of the lens is diopter that is d and p equals to 1 upon f and 1 diopter equals to 1 upon 1 meter so the unit of power is diopter which we consider as d now as the power increases the focal length decreases if the focal length will increase then power will decrease why because these two parameters that is the power and the focal length is both are inversely proportional to each other now suppose if two lenses are used combination of two lenses are used then two if two lenses with the focal length f1 and f2 are kept in contact with each other then uh, we get an effective focal length which can be represented as 1 upon f equal to 1 upon f1 plus 1 upon f2. And if the power of two lenses are p1 and p2, then the effective power of the combination is p equals to p1 plus p2. So likewise, two can be placed. Now here, we have seen this uh, problems, how it is solved. Now, uh, for the power, the f should be in uh, meters we mostly express this in meters so if centimeters are given just convert centimeters into meters okay, okay. then comes the human eye now uh, what we see whatever we see the outside with the help of these eyes eyes are very important part in our body okay with the help of eyes only we can see different types of things whatever things are happening what we can see so in short it is the important part so now how it works and what are its parts okay now here power which is known as the membrane okay and this membrane uh, is called as the cornea okay you can see a thin transparent layer is present so the light enters the eye through through this transparent layer which is known as the cornea so the maximum amount of incident ray is refracted inside the eyes at the outer surface of the cornea so at maximum amount of incident ray whatever is uh, coming inside incident ray it is get refracted inside the eye okay at the outer surface of the cornea so there is a dark fleshy screen behind the cornea and that fleshy skin is known as the iris okay so the color of the iris is different for different people it may be blue it may be brown or it may be black okay so there is a small hole of changing diameter at the center of the iris which is known as the pupil now why there is a changing diameter uh, it, the name changing diameter is given here because it contracts and it expands depending upon the amount of light entering the eyes. So here the pupil controls the amount of light entering the eyes and if the light is falling on the eye, it is too bright, then the pupil get contract. While if the light is dim, then it gets wide enough. Okay, you might have seen if you suppose uh, just blow one torch near your eyes when doctors are checking your eyes they put one torch there then the pupil get contracted or it get widened okay depending upon the amount amount of light incident in it so on the surface of the iris there is a bulge of transparent layers and there is a double convex transparent crystalline lens okay you can see here crystalline lens it is given okay so this uh, so what happens here, it is a double convex transparent crystalline lens. Okay, so just behind the pupil. So the lens provides small adjustment of the focal length to focus the image. Okay, so this lens creates a real and inverted image of an object on the screen inside the eye. So this screen is made up of light sensitive cells which are known as the retina. You can see the retina on the right hand side below it is given. Then these cells get excited when light falls on them and generate electric signals. So these signals they are conveyed to the brain through the optic nerves. So later the brain analyzes these signals and convert them in such a way that we perceive the object as they actually are. Okay. Then you can see the optic nerves, small spot nerves are given there. 
then optic dais is also present so here while seeing the objects at a large or infinite distance the lens of the eye becomes flat and the focal length increases okay so here pupils then uh, iris then cornea then retina optical nerve optical dais then muscles all these things they com combine together and with the help of all working of all these um, all these nerves all these or organs so it is easier for you to understand what is present in front of us okay we are able to see that and we get an image okay we get a vision so this is the human eye now <clears throat> so this is only the um, just structure of the human eye working of it we will see it in the next lecture so i hope till i this you have understood so let's uh, do the exercise so can anybody tell what is the lens formula what is the lens formula okay lens formula is uh, it is the it is showing the relationship between the distance of the object and the distance of the image and the focal length and uh, and uh, it is known as the lens formula so lens formula is 1 upon v equal to 1 upon f then comes name the unit of the power of lenses yes anjali unmute yourself and answer anjali then naz ansari unmute yourself and answer yes ma'am uh, the unit of the unit of the power of a lens is dioptrie p is equal to Di 1 upon f okay good so the unit of power of lens is diopter which we represent as d and uh, the formula for the power is p equals to 1 upon f and f is we expressed in meters okay now if the power of the two lenses are p1 and p2 then the effective power of their combination will be what will come p is equal to p1 plus p2 yes very good so p to p1 plus p2 ma'am yes मैम वो जो डबल कॉन्वेक्स लेंस था ना उसका एक बार आप कंसेप्ट क्लियर करे हुए क्या एक बार और ओके सो कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ लेंसेस ये ना मैम सो इफ टू लेंसेस विद फोकल लेंथ f1 एंड f2 if there are two lenses okay now two lenses suppose we considered it as an convex lens if they are placed then if two lenses are there to so naturally there will be two focal lengths okay for one lens there will be one focal length focal length f will be given but if two lenses are present then first lens we will consider it as lens 1 and the second we will consider it as lens 2 for that particular lenses we will be having the different focal lengths for lens 1 we will be having the focal length f1 and for lens 2 we will be having the focal length f2 same way if different focal lengths are there so naturally different powers will be there okay now the formula for the power is if there is one lens then p equals to 1 upon f now two lenses we are using now two lenses will have different focal lengths so if different focal lengths are there that means each lens will be having a different powers so in here in this case the power of the two lenses will be p1 and the power of the second lens will be p2 and in that case we will consider in the place of p1 plus p2 we can also put there 1 upon f1 plus 1 upon f2 now here two formulas are there 1 upon f equal to 1 upon f1 plus 1 upon f2 the 1 upon f means for it is power p equals to 1 upon f okay so here in in place of 1 upon f we can also place p there 
equals to the first lens now 1 upon f is the total focal length okay what we are now effective focal length means what we are uh, combining the focal length of two lenses that is 1 upon f equals to 1 upon f1 plus 1 upon f2 now 1 upon f1 we can also consider an it as p1 because 1 upon f1 can be also used to find the power of first lens okay that's why p1 then 1 upon f2 will be considered as to find the power of the second lens that is p2 so formula for p2 will be 1 upon f2 so likewise these two formulas that is 1 upon f equals to 1 upon f1 plus 1 upon f2 and p equals to p1 plus p2 so that means in place of these 1 upon f 1 upon f1 1 upon f2 we can also place p equals to p1 plus p2 so for two lenses different focal lengths will be there and to find and to find the formula to find the focal length in combine in combination now if two lenses are given so naturally to find out one power or a focal length we have to combine these two focal lengths and then we have to find the total focal length or the effective focal length of that particular two lenses okay we will not consider it as single single we have to consider two focal lengths and if focal lengths are given with the help of that we can also find the power of the lenses so the power of those two lenses will be the combination of lens 1 and lens 2 okay and that will be more effective and that will be more okay because two lenses are there so naturally power will be more okay so that's why we are just uh, adding the power one that is uh, power of first lens and the power two that is the power of the second lens okay okay ma'am ma'am ab isse based ek to question aur lo ke kya matlab agar next lecture mein okay ma'am thank you okay so thank you everyone uh, i thank all the teachers and my dear students and bmc education department have a nice day thank you